Okay, it's time for another video. So we're gonna keep on working on this woods runner that we started. And the, the last video prepared the stock for finishing and or carving. So we're gonna do just a very little bit of carving, nothing in depth, just some very simple stuff that will kind of accentuate the gun a little bit. The carving is completely optional. You don't need to at all, but sometimes a few lines here or there really helps things out. It can be very, very simple. Just a few incise molding lines, or it can be very, very elaborate uh, with relief sculpted and, and uh, it take a great deal of time. So it's a huge subject, and we're not going to delve into all the ins and outs of carving, but we're just going to talk a little bit about it and uh, maybe a few of the techniques and then demonstrate a few of the techniques on this stock. So, as I mentioned, there's basically two types of carving. Sorry for the noise. Uh, we're on Saturday and we're working here in the shop. Um, anyway, two different types of carving. There's incised carving, which is basically just a V groove cut in the stock. And then there's also relief carving, where you outline the, the element and then relieve the background so the element that you're creating stands in relief. And that's known as relief carving. And then in practice, a lot of times, relief and incised are kind of uh, used together too in some styles of carving. Now, to outline your carving or create a V, there's different ways. Uh, you could use a knife. You can use a V tool. You can also use various gouges. Use these in combination where you have a whole, bit, a whole bunch of different sweeps and they're used to Put on your line and move along your line so you pick the ones that match go around the, the line with your gouge and that you stamp it in stabbing in carving that's one technique it works very well but you do need a lot of tools to do it uh, well so you might need 12 or 15 different gouges in order to really do a good job of, uh, of outlining your carving the advantage of a v tool or a knife is that it just takes one tool but it is probably more difficult to control. Sometimes V tools can be very difficult to get to cut well. So there's always a trade-off. But we're just gonna go ahead and start with the V tool. Start with some of the simple cuts first, and then we'll move on from there. So as far as tool brands, uh, I use a lot of the Swiss, what are branded as Swiss made tools. They're made by File, PF, PIL, I believe. To some other no-name brand here. It seems to work pretty decent. We'll talk a little about drawing before I start cutting. I've already started drawing a little bit on this stock. As a beginner, you probably want to work out your drawing pretty carefully. I'm a little more prone just to sketch it, but try to work out your drawing pretty carefully. Look for smooth lines, look for smooth curves, no elbows or kinks in the design. Reference original work when coming up with the designs. I see a lot of people try to invent things and it just looks pretty bad usually. Re reference original work hopefully of the of the period at least of the rifle you're trying to create uh, it'll turn out a lot better in the end so the first thing we'll do some of the simple simpler things are uh, are the uh, incise lines on the cheek piece they're very simple but they add a lot to the to the look of the gun now you could use a gouge cut too rather than two incise lines maybe we'll do that maybe i'll see if i can find a little gouge here it might give it a little more interest. So the first cut, we're actually gonna use a little gouge. You can think of this as a V tool, just more of a rounded V tool. But we're just gonna cut this incise line sort of down the middle of the cheek piece right now. You can tap these, these tools, you can push them by hand. I'll probably just start pushing by hand on these straight lines. The curves, I'll probably tap. Okay, so there's a cut there. Wasn't necessarily a perfect cut. Wasn't a bad cut either. A little wavy. We can come back and use a chisel to clean that up a little bit or what often works well is a round file. 
I'm gonna taper this cut a little bit. I'm gonna make it wider at the back end, narrower at the front, because the cheek piece tapers a little bit as well. So we'll clean it up a little bit here. Shallower at the front. Deeper at the back. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. So I think now we'll put a little incise line over top of it. See how it cuts. So these tools can be a little bit temperamental at best. This chip keeps getting in my way so I can't see my line. You have that problem a lot when you're engraving as well. Okay, so that line doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit wavy and wonky, but not too bad. So we're gonna come back through with a three-cornered file, triangular file, right down the groove, and it should true up these little inconsistencies. Again, we'll make it a little deeper in the back, I think. A little wider. So, I think that looks halfway decent. Now, I probably in the before I'd finish it in the the rounded portion of the groove, I'd probably use a little sandpaper in there. If your file isn't real smooth, you can get in there with a little bit of sandpaper wrapped around your file and clean it up a little bit. So those are two little examples, cuts that add a lot of interest to the cheek piece and help it out a lot. The lower butt molding cut. See, I've got it drawn on the rifle. It kind of curves and tapers as it moves forward. It has to look good with the, the shape of the buttstock. So I'm going to use a little V-tool on it here. And I'll probably push it with my hands here, although it is, isn't necessarily easy. I want to make sure my line looks good because you don't want to have any real waves in this. So I'm just going to follow the edge of this line and hope it'll be okay. So it can be a little taxing for sure, so I probably won't do this all in one go here. Sometimes with gravers, you can sharpen the, the tip so it pushes the, the chip off to one side. Maybe I should try it with a V-tool. Okay, we're getting there. Maybe I'd have done a little better if I was tapping it. Maybe I wouldn't have. I don't know. As you can see, it has some inconsistencies. But overall, where the, the cut is heading is pretty decent. And the little groove extends into the butt plate. Get the back end cleaned up, and then we'll start working forward. does it helps it out a lot you may switch to a different file here this one's kind of hard to use although cut nice so that's one reason why i'm using it if it has a little more curve to the tip it'll be a little easier okay we'll keep on moving forward hopefully we'll be able to get it here okay i'm gonna 
Move the stock in the vise a little more. Right, we're gonna keep on going here. See what we can do. Up. Ah, a little bit of a mistake there. Another one. Okay, so if I made that mistake and I, went, and I wasn't making a um, raised line, this background is going to get relieved, but if I was just making an incise line, I would sand that down to clean it up. Just sand it down. And if you have a little area that you're sanding, don't just sand, sand that one particular area, you'll create a hole. That's a little 220, but probably go to a little 320 then. Here you can see how that fits that up. Now we're going to terminate this line. So we're going to make a little end to the cut. We'll curve down. Curves, I always have better luck with tapping. By tapping, I mean chasing. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Do a little bit more of adjustment here right at the end. Okay, maybe we can live with that, I think. Sometimes these incise lines, I'll break the corner of them a little bit too. I think we can help out. Sometimes I'll leave them a little sharp. That's more or less a lower butt motion. See a little bit up here. I'd like to try to adjust it just a wee bit. If I can. That looks better. Okay, that file that we used before was a little um, blunter at the edge since it was a bigger file. This will make that V just a little sharper down in the bottom. So I think it'll be nice. Now I can move the piece in the vise or I'm going to probably start here and work around. This is probably a little riskier, but I think I can do it. So I want it to Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. I'm still a little bit unhappy with this shape here. I'm trying to get the shape a little better to fix what I've done. I had a little bit of an odd shape, and now I'm trying to recover from that. What I'm basically doing is I'm cutting on either side of the line to try to, try to fix things. So now I'm going to come back, cut this line again, make it a little nicer. looking pretty decent not too bad if there's any kind of wobbles or inconsistencies you can hit those areas
Okay, I think I'm kind of liking that. Again, I'm just kind of looking at it to make sure it's the shape that I want. Okay, that was a little better cut. Okay, and we're going to make this relief too, so. trim it a little bit if you see any inconsistencies but you wouldn't have to do any any relieving of the carving or anything just be a little bit of incised carving but we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of turn it into relief first thing we'll do is we'll relieve the lower buck molding Now we're going to run, relieve it. By what relieving means cutting the the wood away on the opposite side of your your element, your molding, or whatever the heck it is. You notice I'm kind of pushing so it moves away from the molding line as I'm cutting it. Because what'll happen is, if you're not careful, the corner of your tool will get into. your element, which you don't want. Okay, so I've about kind of reached all I can. I'm doing bevel down. I've got a longer chisel. It would probably work real well, but I'm just going to turn the bevel up. So I'm kind of running out of access to have my fingers and being able to hold the tool. And there, i got that corner in there a little bit. Bevel, bevel down will give you more access now. Gonna fade that off a little bit. Okay, so the lights, right? You can see how you have a little bit of relief now. We're probably gonna come back and do a little more, at least at the back. Trying to knock off any high spots. Okay, we need to file a little bit more now. I don't have a safe edge on this file, but sometimes a safe edge is good because it won't cut your molding. So I have to be a little more careful. Now we could leave the background all chisel cut, take a little bit of time, but I'm just gonna file it down and make it a little, get, get done with this a little quicker. By chisel cut, I mean you could just not use a file, you could simply just leave the chisel cuts, creating your relief. But you have to take a little bit of time to, to get them trued up. So we're just gonna move ahead like this. You can see it's going pretty good. Okay. Move forward and do up here. Now, you can use a bent file. Hopefully this file will give me enough relief here to get up here, but if we have to, we'll use a bent file. Okay. 
Okay, so that's not going terrible. Use that little little bit of a scraper here. File. The idea is to blend this off, feather it out too. I'm gonna use a we're gonna a little better access. I'm gonna use a rifter file up in this area a little bit. Just to kind of clean it up. By a riffler file, it has a bend to it. It's running out of access. That doesn't look too bad. So now, I think we'll just go ahead and scrape this. So we can come in here like this and... It might dull a chisel a little bit, but it works pretty good. It has to be fairly flat before you start to scrape. Okay. I can move my light, see if I see anything that looks bad. I don't think it looks too bad. I think we've done a fairly decent job at it. Clean things up just a little bit here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I might hit it with a little scotch bright. Scotch bright is just it's abrasive fabric. So I think that looks pretty good. There's a few remnants you can tell that it's been chisel cut, but there's no gouges or anything, so looks good. So now we're gonna come up here and relieve this comb. So in order to do the comb the way the grain is, I'm gonna have to start here and work down. I'm taking it back just a little bit so I can blend it in. Of course, these are just flat chisels that I'm using to relieve. Pretty curly here, so it is going to be prone to chip. Started right there. So as I'm cutting, I'm trying to read the grain. There, it popped a little bit right on the quarter. Now, right on the quarter, it means that the growth rings are perpendicular to this face. And you see these little ray flex. Right on the quarter is the hardest place to carve that's prone to chipping and chipping out so in order to do that you see that little chip out right there lighten up your cuts sharpen your tool but the quarter is the quarter sawn face or surface is be pretty difficult okay Especially on a really curly piece. It's right here it has some pretty good curl. I'm trying to blend this back a little bit. Okay, now we're going to start extending down here. I grab a little smaller chisel here. I'm going to be very mindful of chipping. So there's a little pop there. There's a little chip. So you should slice the wood rather than. Slice the wood rather than splitting it when you're using a chisel when you're carving like this, but it can be tricky in some areas such as this. Thinner cuts will help you when you're in bat, a tough area like this. Now contrast this to the lower butt molding, and there was no tendency whatsoever for chipping. There's a little less curl down there, and the grain was coming out. By these, these annual rings coming out, you can see we're the grain is at a bias to the surface that we're cutting, and that keeps it very favorable. So if you cut in the right direction, when you have a good bias grain direction, you can cut very smooth very easily. I'm just trying to shave off these high areas because there still are some low areas from when, especially from when the grain popped a little bit I'm trying not to make those too deep or they can be really hard to recover from I 
And again, I'm trying not to be too close to my element. You don't want to hit your element that you're carving. And you try to do the majority of the work with chisels. Big open areas, you can use files. You can then scrape too, but try to get it pretty good with chisels. There's a tendency of beginners to try to just sand everything flat. But that's, that's not, generally doesn't work too good. Riffler files can be used in moderation, but not that much. You, you don't really want to rely on them. So I'm taking very, very thin cuts to try to defeat this grain here. And it's getting there pretty good. So now I'm going to keep working around this little blue. And again, I'm trying not to chip. Now I'm coming around, cutting kind of cross-grained here, so that's that's an okay position. Come on. Okay. So we're getting there. And we're going to turn it in the vise. It's kind of tiny little blue, but it still looks decent. You see a lot of variations on originals and sometimes things that are maybe less than perfect or a little bit unusual can, can really add the interest. So I'm just relieving the one side and going clear around this little blue. I'd often also use a, a skew chisel for this type of work. You can get in it real easy. Skew chisel, get in the areas real easy. So the skew chisel is this tool right here. And it lets you sometimes get in these little, little tighter areas. It lets you get in there a little better. You can also come and trim the sides of your, if you want to adjust the shape. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. So this bigger open area, we're going to blend it. We want to make sure it's a smooth transition from the background. Bring this down just a little bit. We won't go to get this 100% until we do the other side, but we're gonna get it pretty damn close. We wanna make it look like the wrist is, it's smooth. There's no abruptness from the wrist down through that relief area. Okay, so that's looking not too bad, I don't think feathering it out a little bit. I'm gonna see real quick how that, that little riffler will do if I just do a little bit to clean this up. Knock off some of the high spots. I wouldn't have to, but I'm just gonna do a little bit. And you can also do things like, again, you have to be gentle with this, but you can fold paper over, come up in here and knock off a little bit of that. With enough time, you can just do your chisel cuts too. And that's probably, that's really the ultimate. But it takes longer and we're just gonna get this done and it looks good in the end too. Painting it up pretty good. And I see one thing that I wanna do is I wanna make it a little deeper back here in the back, back side. Just make a few more cuts. So this comes around. Okay, now that didn't release completely. So we're gonna come back with our V tool. Okay, and we're just gonna just clean that up a little bit. Okay, it's looking pretty good. A few things I see, I'm gonna trim this edge just a tiny little bit. Just a little bit of an inconsistency right there. You can leave these edges super sharp or you can sand them down a little bit. In this case, we'll probably use a little 320 just to soften them just a little wee bit. Not a lot, just a little wee bit. We'll get in here and we'll scrape too, like we did on the lower butt molding. Okay, so that's looking pretty, pretty good. Get a little scotch bright here. 
Clean it up a bit. Soften the edges a little bit. Okay, not perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. Sometimes good enough is good enough. Now we'll do this other cut. We'll relieve this stuff in the back here. So with this, this particular design makes relieving this a little bit tricky. This cheek piece swells up. So it's highest here and then gets shallower here. So in order to relieve this design, I've got to relieve some of this material back underneath the cheek piece. But we're just gonna go ahead and get it done and do it. There's a pop right there. See how that, that's what you wanna avoid, the pops like that. You get one of those, then, you, then it's like, yo, you gotta go at least that deep. So this is being a little unhappy cutting in this direction, which I'm surprised by unhappy. It's whether it wants to pop and tear and you want everything to be slices that you, you control, not, not the wood tearing on you. There's often a, a preferred grain direction to cut, which this is still the preferred grain direction. I can tell by the growth rings that I see, and I can also tell by the shininess of the cut. Now, curly wood by nature is, is, uh, is a little trickier to cut because it, the, the grain is wavy. It's just the nature of it but there still is a preferred direction. Okay. Frequent sharpenings help. So using this tool as a scraper doesn't help things because that kind of dulls it, but we may sharpen or we may just keep going here. Okay. If I come along here and start slicing this a little bit. Oops, there's a pop there. We don't want that. See how that popped? cheat this to get a little bit of relief out of it at least. So I changed directions because I didn't like how that thing was cutting. With regards to the tearing more than anything. Okay, so we're coming along good. We don't have a huge amount of relief here, but still it'll give it a neat look to have at least some. I'll probably use that skew chisel to get in there. And carving is an acquired skill. It takes takes a lot of practice if this thing's sharp. I used to do a lot of carving, but I rarely carve anymore. You can get out of practice. So this skew chisel allows you to kind of slice. It's basically like a knife. You can get in these areas and you have trouble accessing with the chisel. Okay, come and cut and release, release a little bit of this. Clean that crotch out a little bit. Now we'll come around here and see if I can cut this one out. Nope, not happy that way come this way. So there's a big chip there. I don't like that one. I'm going to have to battle to make that look good. Some wood is very chippy. Some wood isn't. But with enough care, sharp enough tools, you can carve just about any piece of wood. Okay, so we're going to come along with the, the V-tool and try to clean up that bottom a little, a little bit. I could come along with the skew chisel and use it like a knife, but since we've done all of our shaping with the V-tool, let's just try to keep on going with it. Let's try to start, well, let me just start right here. I'm 
clean that up a little bit. It's working. Okay. Not terrible. The start of it here. You can see that little chip that down in there. So we have a little bit more background work to do, but it's relieved. Come to the file again, blend this in, do a little background work here. See, I'm moving my lamp a lot so I can see what the heck's going on. You don't really want your relief to dive in around your carving. Some originals you'll see that, but it's a little lower grade of carving. You usually want to fade it out a little bit. Carry your lines through your stock so it looks like your carving has been applied to your surface. Now, you don't have to take that to an extreme. Like you can see, I'm, I'm doing a little cheating here. I'm kind of diving a little bit, but not a lot. Big open areas, you can use a mill file. This is just a mill file. Single cut, eight inch baco file that I'm using to get in here and straighten these areas up. Already looking pretty good. File, I'm going at this lower edge of the cheek piece a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit the file wouldn't get to. Get in here and scrape this out a little bit. Bucking the grain a little bit, I think. The scraper makes more noise. It's not quite as shiny either. You cut. But this grain is transitioning where it cuts good one direction and it transitions a little bit. So we're just going to go this way. Not cutting great. I'm gonna try to shave it a little bit. Not scraping nice. So we're just gonna try to shave this down a little bit, which is working. It's much better. Okay. Not bad. Lower edge, the edges of these are, are a little bit ragged. I used to be pretty good at this, but I did a lot of incise work like this. But your tools have to be sharp, that's for sure. Come up here and clean that up a little bit. Okay, now I'm trying to find a little piece of Scotch Brite and try to find a little brush. We can brush this out. So I think it's pretty darn good. there to accentuate that just a little bit there's a little bit of an incised line in the, the background hi Daisy hi Daisy Okay, that'll do. Actually, I want to curve that around a little more. Come on. Okay. That's pretty. Yeah, it's just something kind of simple, but that looks good. Soften these edges just a little wee bit too. Okay. Not perfect, but be good enough. I'll try to keep it somewhat similar to this other side in the shape of it.
That doesn't have to be exactly because you don't you don't see both sides at once. Nobody's looking for, to be honest, nobody's going to be looking for any kind of deviations like that. If they do, then they're dumb. We're going to come around here and make a little volute. This can be small or it could be a little bigger if we wanted. I don't know. I think it'll be okay. We're gonna go with that. Okay. Now we have to draw on the lower butt molding. Wide to start. Not very wide to start. About back here. About that wide. A taper, and you want it to be a nice smooth curve and all that business. Let's see what we can do here. Thought I had it. You can kind of turn in this thing as I'm going. I like to use a straight edge. You can sketch it, but I like to use a straight edge. And that'll do. I don't know if it exactly matches the other side or not, but it's okay. I think it's a pretty nice fair curve. Looks pretty good. diving just a little bit here so hopefully we can cut without it diving too much that's going okay what do you mean by diving like deeper in the wood yeah okay. so you want to be able to control the the depth and the width of the cut you don't want the grain to drag you in okay so I did good in some areas then I kind of failed a little bit so we're going to come Clean this up a little bit more. Come on, baby. So one thing interesting with the, the V tool is you're always fighting the grain on one direction, one side of the the cutter. Now it's kind of hard to explain if we were to go to a chalkboard or something we'd be able to explain it but you know what that becomes difficulty with is making a smooth cut all the time okay we'll keep on coming around play this game all the time when engraving too tendency if I keep it here straight since it falls off I'm gonna have to keep fighting it. it's gonna want to go down into it so if I angle it up a little bit it'll just make it a little bit easier I won't have to fight it quite so much okay this is kind of a fatiguing cut here but we'll get it done there's that damn chip again getting in my way There's a little bit of a, a little hick hick up there. See, I went a little low there, so then I, that means that I have to fight to fix that, which isn't something you want to do. I have to do, but we'll get it. Okay, didn't do quite as good a job there, but I think we can get this ironed out. Okay. 
going pretty good. So a little wonkiness right here. Since we're leaving it, I'm mostly just concentrating on this edge that will be left. I guess it's a little high here. We're going to carve that away anyway, so it won't make any difference. Okay, so looking pretty good, other than I got a little high spot here. Try to get that off. Once we relieve it, it's going to look better anyway. I'm not, I'm not the best um, helper for the camera person. I don't keep that in mind like I ought to. See how happy that is cutting. It gets happier. Happier than can be. No chipping and crap. Let's start using the bevel down. Okay, I was digging into my side a little bit, which you shouldn't do. You shouldn't hit your side of your wall. It'll be okay. We'll get it fixed up. Just the nature of the, the shape here, it's going to be pretty deep right in that area because I'm just I'm being mindful to keep the shape of the wrist coming down the, the gun. Now we're getting into a little chipping. It's going deep, you can see the chips aren't releasing. So I have to come down with the, we'll use this new chisel again to clean that edge up. Trying to feather it in a little bit, taking off the high spots. It's more or less what I'm doing. Okay, that's looking better. Trying to see where we're at. Start to turn into a nice looking line. So I think I'm going to turn it in the vise now. So see how this will cut like this. I don't know if it'll cut happily or not. Not bad. Okay, I think that's a decent start. See the shape of it?
Now it's going too deep. See how that one, see that little cut there? Mm -hmm. So now I gotta blend that in. It just went on me. That's the, an example of it sucking you in. Come on, baby. Maybe it's getting duller than can be. Okay, that looks better. So now we'll get the background cleaned up here. It's kind of a neat line. It's kind of dramatic how it starts mm -hmm. thin and. filing up the up the grain against the grain which isn't ideal but it'll be okay. okay I'm gonna come with a chisel okay so we need to put the lights so that looks the worst the tears there you can see I wanted to move my lights that showed all my issues. And I'm attempting just to carefully shave off all those little high spots. Without creating any more problems. Turn this like this because it does curve a little bit. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Okay, now let's get in here and scrape this a little bit. We all sand it a little bit first, just to smooth it up a tad. Knock off a few of those high spots, and we'll get in here with the scraper. So we lost power with the phone, so I kept going a little bit. <laughs> um, Catherine's not happy. No. But I did a little bit on the floor buttboard. You can see I'm starting to be relieved. It cut pretty slick and pretty smooth. So we'll finish that up, and then this guy will be ready for stain. See how nice and slick this is cutting? Yeah. Very happily right there. Did a little tear right there right when you said that. Did it? Let me see there. Oh yeah, a little bit right there. Look how I moved the, the light and I can see there's some very shallow little tears. But we'll get that out of there. I think what we'll do, we'll just go ahead and start doing our file here. Catherine's been pestering me about doing this and I haven't wanted to do it and now I don't want to stop till it's done. I don't know how why it works like that. 
I don't pester. <laughs> We have more equipment going right now. I went ahead and started the equipment back up. I knew you weren't going to wait for me. So what you hear in the background are woods runner stocks being made and the 45 caliber mountain rifle barrels being made and an air compressor and a vacuum pump. And that's about it right now. And then we're getting ready to get another stock on the machine to make mountain rifles. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Not bad anyway. Still a few tears. So it's about six Saturday. And we have our second shift coming in right now. Okay. Oops. Okay, we'll have to scrape that the rest of the way. a little bit difficult to carve and a video carving. You have to move a lot with carving. That's why you can see it's good to stand. It's not, not the best idea to try to sit when you're carving. Okay, so a few areas that are kind of giving me fit, so I'm going to hit those a little sandpaper here and come back and scrape a little more, fold it up so it has a little backing. The areas in here were not cutting clean and not scraping clean. Give that little, another little scraping and we'll be okay. Now you can use regular, I have some chisels that kind of shaped like this but I I sharpened a more of a scraper edge but that'll keep your your good chisels from from dulling them as quickly you can you, you can make up little scrapers about any time for this work have them complicate things and not everybody has those so you can just see the chisel alone does does okay for the task I figured there'd be somebody say, well, you shouldn't scrape with your chisels. It'll dull them, which it will. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. Get this little scotch bright. One thing I forgot about is the patch box lid. We need to put a um, little thumb catch in the patch box lid. And I didn't prepare, I didn't sand it yet, but we'll have to get it. I think it's looking pretty good. You can see by those two things, the blue and the lower butt molding, how that it helps it out. And it's not a lot. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so it's the next day. We didn't quite get the carving done. I didn't get the little thumb catch in the patch box lid. So it, the, the, the thumb catch serves a purpose in that when you lift the box spring, so this little spring here retains the patch box, stick it a little bit, retains the patch box, and if you have, just like you see, I had to push it with my other thumb, if you have a little catch for your thumb, it makes that a little bit easier, and it's a little decorative purpose too. You want something that looks, it's not necessarily too big, not too small, it looks just about right.
So I'm just gonna sketch it on here. Probably plenty big there. And you'll see different shapes of these in the originals. We're gonna make something that's not too obnoxious, big or crazy since it's relatively restrained carving. Just draw it on there and see whether I like it or not. And then we'll start carving it on there. I think that shape will be okay somewhere in there. Yeah, looks like that'll work. So pick a gouge that'll kind of match that shape at the end. So you stab that down first and then you come back at an angle and cut the little chips out. So we'll, it's easiest just probably just do this right in the gun. Now I trust my vise, but I'm putting my other hand underneath it too, just to be sure because I don't want it to fall out. So I'm putting quite a bit of force in order to cut this cross grain. deepest in the middle. Okay, so that's a start. I'll look at it. it. looks like a decently shaped. Now we're going to come from this direction and start cutting it out. I think I'll move it, the gun and the vise to just be a little easier. What size gouge is that? This is a number three sweep, eight millimeters wide. I'm gonna come in here and start cutting this out now. So you layer it. Yeah, best not there. to best not to take it all off. Try to take it all off in one cut. Okay. Um, so usually you take multiple cuts, slicing down rather than do it all okay. at once. Because if you sneak up on it, then you can see how it looks too. So I'm gonna go a little deeper now to make sure it's all released, especially in the center. So go a little deeper and just keep on adjusting here. It's probably not too far from where it's gonna be. It might come out a little bit here. And I'm just kind of looking at the shape of it to see what's appealing to the eye. Like I said, this carving is relatively, res relatively restrained on this gun, so we're not going to make anything that draws too much attention. And decide if we need to do anything more or change the shape. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we'll adjust it a little bit. I just look at the shape and I just see a little something that I like. It. What is it you don't like about that shape? Um, let me find my gal. So it comes back a little bit, at kind of a steep angle up top here, okay. this this line. So I'll probably make that a little bit more. Flatten that out just a little bit. Okay, look a little deeper. I think that'll probably probably be okay. okay. Now we're gonna release those chips again. Yeah, and it's just a just a little detail that looks good. You see it on almost all originals with boxes, and, and it serves a purpose too. So now probably I'll be able to take this out without my other finger in the way. So get my other hand on it there, see? I didn't have to come and push with my other thumb. Mm -hmm. So it does serve a purpose. When you're um, designing it, like this line, what should you be Yeah, thinking? so this has a little curve and it's kind of following this the shape of the, the back of the box a little bit, just so it looks harmonious with the okay. surroundings. That's always one thing that's very important with carving, and it takes a lot of time and, and work to develop, but your carving should go with the gun. See a little, little catch right here that I want to get rid of. That's better. Okay, so that's uh, that wraps up this carving, I think. I'm going to move it in the light gently, and you can see it. And like I said, this carving is pretty restrained. Oftentimes you see some carving around the tang and some beaver tails along the, the lock. 
and that would be nice to do on this, but on some original guns, you see a wide range of carving. It's not carved always in all the typical areas. And, and this is just sort of a, a little less highly carved gun. But it has lines to kind of accentuate the, uh, or carving that accentuates the lines of the gun. And something a beginner could try? Think? Yeah, I think so. Take your time. And uh, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but you develop, uh, you know, with, with practice, you develop skills and, and start simple, maybe get some lines on your cheek piece. And if that seems like it works out well, maybe try a lower butt molding line and, and go from there. So we'll stain it next time? Yeah, yeah, next time we'll add stain to the gun and start finishing it. After that, we'll... Uh, Polish up the brass parts and the metal parts, then it'll be ready to assemble and be done.